Hi everyone and oops. <laughs> okay, I think we're still live. All right. <laughs> Hi and welcome to day two of day five um, of Camping 101. Today we're talking about tips and tricks to be an expert the first time you go camping. And the reason that this came up, one of the main reasons is because Earlier this year, we went camping and we actually saw somebody using a fogger in the state park to get rid of the mosquitoes. Now, yes, the mosquitoes were really bad at that particular weekend, um, but I've just never seen somebody use a fogger before um, in an outdoor environment like that. And because you're not just killing the mosquitoes with the fogger, there's other insects that are being impacted and then the pesticides are in the air for the birds and it's just it it was one of those things where you never thought you had to put don't bring a fogger on your camping trip but we we found that we did actually have to put that 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 is something that you might have to start saying now so what we wanted to do was give you a list of things that kind of like things that we've learned over the years or things that we've seen other people doing at um, while they're camping so that you can kind of know some general guidelines on um, how to be more successful your first time camping. So after we saw this guy with the fogger, we put out on the Facebook group, we asked you guys, what are your pet peeves like when you go camping when you see a first time camper? Because you just don't know, right? Like you just go from inside to outside and you treat everything like you would in your backyard the same sometimes. So. One of the biggest things that came up was leave no, leave no trace principles. Um, so with leave no trace, what that means is you want to leave the area that you're going to in better condition than you left it. You don't want anybody to know that you were there. So you're not throwing any food on the ground. You're not... Um, you know, you're, you're carrying any food that you're taking with you, you're carrying out with you. So a lot of times with food, people are like, well, can I just throw this banana peel or can I throw these crackers on the ground if I'm not going to eat them because there's wildlife um, and it'll decompose. But you don't want to do that because the wild, number one, the wildlife, um, if they start eating food, they'll start expecting that and the wildlife will actually be start becoming more dangerous to humans. Um, and then the second reason is just the environment. Like things don't really decompose that quickly. And so if everybody's dropping their trash, eventually it's going to start, you know, building up and you're going to look more like a landfill than a park. So, um, and plus like invasive things like, you know, if it's an apple, you know, you, the seeds could start growing in it and it messes up with just the natural native plants that, that should be there. So um, you want to make sure, so food, if you're bringing food, make sure you're throwing everything away. Um, all of your garbage you want to throw away. Um, you want to minimize your campfire impacts. So uh, a lot of times people like to go out there and make big bonfires. But just remember every time you're making a fire, that is a tree that um, was cut down for you to be able to use the firewood. Now in a lot of cases we're using, you know, the older trees, but um, you know, if we're just kind of using, build the fire to the extent that you need it, then um, it'll go much further. And then respect the wildlife. Um, don't poke the alligators. They might poke you back, <laughs> but with something sharper. So, um, so respect the wildlife. Don't throw stones, you know, to see if an alligator is an alligator or if it's a log. Um, it'll let you know, um, you know, don't try to um, don't feed the animals again. Um, just remember, just kind of treat them, just leave them alone. You can observe them, you can take pictures, and then just keep going. And then just be considerate of uh, other people that are out on the trail. Um, respect that they're out there for maybe different reasons than you're out there. So uh, if you want the list, I forgot to tell you, go ahead and download, download the workbook, the Camping 101 workbook. It's good for all five videos. So if you've already got it from yesterday's video, then you're good to go. But if you haven't gotten the workbook yet, go to hgxoutdoors.com forward slash camping, or you can get it from the Bayou City Outdoors website. 
um, as well. Okay, um, so leave no trace. There's a whole leave no trace um, principles that are out there. It's on uh, lnt.org. So you can go to that website and you can get more details, very specific details, and how you can different ways you can help um, from the leave no trace nonprofit. Okay, the next thing that was the big item on people's um, to, uh, tips for camping was respecting noise levels. So when you're out in nature, when you're camping, a lot of people want to go out there to actually enjoy nature. So it's rare you know, rare times where you don't always hear a lot of buzzing, car buzzings or alarms going, hopefully your alarm's not going off, that is on our list. But um, you I can actually hear the birds, you can hear the frogs, you can hear the crickets. Sometimes there's a river rushing by, you know, so you really want to be able to enjoy being outside, that's one of the reasons that you're camping. So respect the noise levels because it will travel, noise will travel across the campsites. And um, and so you wanna just keep your, your group noise level down. And as far as radios, everybody seems to have a different take on radios. I personally don't enjoy radios um, while I'm camping because I am there to experience part of the wildlife. Um, if you are going to use a radio, keep it on low because remember it's going to travel. And then I would say, you know, turn it off when the sun goes down. Um, typically, at the later it gets in the day, the, like the lower your voices get, you know. Um, but every park does have quiet hours posted. They're they're typically between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Uh, uh, the other way. Their quiet hours are typically 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., um, but every park is a little bit different, um, so just check the quiet hours, and it, it never hurts to, like, stay on the lower side of things, even when it's not technically quiet hours. Um, so with your cars, you know, if there's a setting for you to turn the beeping off when you're locking your cars or opening your doors, that's a good thing to do because if your car camping, all of your stuff is in the car, and so you're constantly going in and out of the, the car, and it's beeping and door slamming. So if everybody in the park is doing that, it can get a little bit annoying. So as much as you can minimize, like how many times you're going in your car and the beeps that are coming out, <laughs> coming from your car, um, that's always helpful to keep the noise levels down because. All of these noise levels also, they're going to scare away the wildlife. So if you are trying to see, you know, deer in the morning and somebody opens their car and the alarm goes off, then you're not going to get a chance to see that. Um, okay. So, this is kind of a random one. I'm looking at the workbook, but it's uh, don't burn... Don't burn your poker stick. So <laughs> anytime you're making a campfire, um, the first thing you want to do is go when you're collecting wood is, or I'll get back to that in a second, but is um, look for a poker stick. So the poker stick is what you're going to use throughout making the fire to move the logs around. And a lot of times if people aren't familiar with um, building a fire, they throw the poker stick into the fire and burn it. And then you have nothing left to use as a poker stick. And it does become important in some parks when they're when you're not allowed to collect um, wood from the, the park. You have to either you know buy it from the park or or bring it yourself. If you can't free gather, it does become a problem because then you can't adjust the airflow um, in your in your campfire. So you know that brings me to know the rules of the park when you're going to make a campfire so some parks um, allow you to collect firewood from around the park so if they have a lot of um, trees that are down or branches um, that are that's covering the ground um, then they may let you collect it from the ground uh, and then other parks you are not allowed you can get a fine if you if you collect wood from the ground you either have to buy it from them or they can they can tell you where they recommend you buying it from and then other parks um, ask for you to bring your own wood so you just have to know which park has what rules you just it's either listed on their website or you can call them before you head out so that you know if you should bring wood or not and one of the main reasons the parks want you to um, get the wood from them is because the wood can have 
uh, insects from various places. They don't want you bringing um, insects from another ecosystem into into the park that might mess it up. And same with fungi, fungus and bacteria and stuff like that. So that's one of the main reasons they want you to get it from the park. And then usually they don't want you collecting it off the ground because um, sometimes the they need the um, wood on the ground to prevent erosion or you know if there's a dead tree they don't want you like kicking down the stump of the dead tree even if it's dead and definitely don't take anything from live trees it doesn't burn anyway so it doesn't help you <laughs> okay so a couple other things um, food going back to food when you're camping, it's very important to keep your campsites really clean. So you don't want to leave any food out on the picnic tables um, when you're leaving for the day. And you don't want to bring any food into your tent. So animals are going to smell the food. Um, you know, there's raccoons, there could be armadillo. Uh, this past weekend in Garner State Park, there were vultures. And actually somebody left a package of cheese on their picnic table. Um, and then they left. I guess they figured the next person camping might want the cheese. But the vulture literally came down and like um, put a huge hole in the cheese packet and like grabbed some plastic and cheese and flew away. So um, obviously it's not helpful for the vultures to eat the plastic. So that's number one reason. Um, but we also don't want to be feeding the animals like we just talked about. Um, but then um, if you bring that your food into your tent then the, the same animals are going to probably try to get into your tent or they could try to get into your tent and so you don't want that so anything smelly like toiletries toothpaste deodorant all of that stuff should stay in your car or um, in um, a, a container uh, where the animals can't get into and if you're in bear country you have to make sure that it's all in bear bear food boxes or safety boxes that are provided they're usually provided by the parks in that case um a couple other things is like when you get a campsite you are designated a, a spot um so once you check in we talked about how to pick a spot yesterday and so once you grab your spot you're checked into that spot now sometimes there can be two camping sites back to back and it might seem like a good idea to just cut through somebody else's campsite because it's a shortcut to the bathroom but you really shouldn't uh, walk through people's campsites you know it's better to walk around them usually the loops are not that big so it's just like people kind of even though you're camping right next to each other it's kind of like your space and you know you should just respect other people's space and and just walk around because you're out there to get exercise and to do that kind of stuff too so if you really want a shortcut to the bathroom the easiest thing to do is get a campsite that's next to the bathroom okay um let's see uh i'm just checking taking a look at the workbook really quick to see if i forgot anything important um you can download the workbook we've got two pages of um details about tips about um how to how to make it look like it's not your first time camping um so one thing oh two more things the um um when you're leaving your campsite for the day uh you have a rain fly so your tent we're going to talk about show you how to set up a tent and stuff tomorrow but your tents when you set up your tent, you have a rain fly, and the rain fly and your tent also have windows and doors. And when you're leaving your campsite, what's it's best to close all of that because if it starts to rain unexpectedly throughout the day, you don't want your tent to get wet or anything that's in it. So that's probably one of the worst case scenarios is if your sleeping bag and your stuff that you're gonna sleep in gets wet especially if it's going to be cold at night so you want to make sure everything stays dry it does it seems like a good idea because if it's going to be hot during the day you you might want the to cool off your tent so that it's not stuffy at night but um definitely keep an eye on the weather before you do that and then before you go to bed just make sure your fire is out um for your fire to be out 
you don't want to see any red coals. There definitely shouldn't be any flames, um, you know, because a lot of times the wind picks up at night, and so you don't want the wind picking up sparks from your fire and creating, you know, wildfires. So those are just some, some of the tips that we've come up with. Um, if you have any of your own that you think is important for other people to know, feel free to go ahead and uh, write them in the comments section. And if you need to get your workbook still, it's good for all five um, days this week where we're do talking about camping. And you can get it at hcxoutdoors.com forward slash camping or from bayoucityoutdoors.com. Um, and then the uh, tomorrow we're gonna be at Whole Earth Provision and we're gonna be live from that location if you wanna come live to see, to talk about um, camping gear. So we're gonna talk about the essentials um, and then what's a nice to have. So um, feel free to join us tomorrow. We're gonna be there at 7 p.m. tomorrow instead of noon. So we will see you there. Thanks.